As the psalmist says, I think it is a good thing to praise and worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. I mean, it does something for you, uh, for your soul and your spirit uh, to connect with him in that, in that way. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, uh, Georgia, for your communion message. We need to be reminded about that. <coughs> just, it's amazing how easy you forget things. Well, maybe that's just a male problem. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but thank God for a good wife. It keeps reminding me of all sorts of things. Um, but we need to be reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen? Praise God. Just a few uh, notes as our home fellowship, still school holidays, and also the next couple of weeks our daughter, who we haven't seen for seven years, is uh, coming down today, I hope. <laughs> so, uh, and be with us for a couple of weeks, so we'll probably put a hold on that. Just to let you know, advance notice, um, some of you may have heard of an organisation called uh, Gate to Pray. That's actually Victorian. Uh, a gentleman from down there, um, Ross Bellos, and a number of others have got together to pray for our nation. And uh, so they're doing a prayer gathering on Anzac Day uh, in the evening. That's the uh, April the 25th, I think it's 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night, be online. Uh, and they're going to be calling the nation to prayer and prayer and fasting. And uh, I'll provide you, uh, if you give me your uh, details, I think I've got all your details apart from uh, uh, Paul and Jackie, I think. Uh, regard, I'll send, it, I'll send the text out to you as the contact there. Amen. Uh, church roster. Now, there's, I won't say you know, that the way to you know, where is paved with good intentions, but I put out a church roster and thought, oh, I've been through it and I've changed it a whole lot of times and moved around and people have contacted me about this. And I bring them this morning and believe it or not, there's a change already. But do take a copy or I will come around and give you a copy just so you know who's on and uh, if you do have to change for whatever reason, then you know, just uh, let that person or change with someone, but let me be known for it. Also, as I say, we're uh, moving into the 21st century and to have Pat has put our uh, service, our praise and worship, and a uh, message on YouTube under BCF Church. I think that's it, isn't it, Pat? Yep. BCF Dot Church. Church. BCF. Dot Church. BCF. Now, BCF. I, I didn't realise this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the one who writes it up. It's BCF Bega Church. BCF Bega Church, no, right? Oh, because there's Bega. a lot of BCF churches. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there are. In America. Yes. Yeah. Well. I'm, I'm amazed how many how many uh, churches there are in uh, with BCF. So we, get, we leave it at BCF because obviously those of you who are into the other things, boating, camping, camping, fishing. Boating, yeah. camping and fishing, yeah, we just didn't know what's up So, uh, if you go online, you will see, uh, you can enter in our praise and worship, and, uh, and I think one of the messages I finally got around to going on to it, and uh, I thought, oh, I'll just have a quick look, see how it is, you know, see how it comes across. I finished up watching the whole lot. <laughs> oh, gee, this is a good word. Praise God. So, uh, it, it's, it's good to build ourselves up. As I say, we sometimes uh, forget what the word was, but if we look at it again, that word can take root in our heart. Now we have our brother Carey coming to bring the word yeah, for us Kerry. today. Yeah, <laughs> so praise God. Let's uh, open our hearts and our ears to yes. hear what the Lord will say to Carey today. I understand. Well, the message I've got today um, is called Chosen People, it's the title I've made for it. But I'm going to use the parable of the tenants from Matthew 21. So I'll read through that starting at uh, 33. Listen to another parable. There once was a landowner who planted a vineyard. 
You put a wall around it, you dug a wine press in it, you built a watchtower, then you rented the vineyard to some other farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants, they beat one, killed another, stoned a third. So then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time. And the tenants treated them in the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They res they'll respect my son, he said. But the tenants saw the son and they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him outside of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them then, Have you never heard the scripture? The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in his eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce good fruit. Anyone who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone whom the stone falls on will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew they were taught he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because they heard the people that they heard he was a prophet. Anyway, you're probably familiar with that, but what I wanted to do was um, look at the characters in the parable, really. So first of all was the landowner who planted the vineyard, was God and was the landowner, and the vineyard was his chosen people. So in Isaiah 5 we're told the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Israel was God's chosen people for two basic reasons. God was fulfilling a promise to Abraham and God wanted Israel as a model nation. So I want to just cross-reference back to Isaiah 5 now with the story of the vineyard. And in Isaiah 5 it starts in verse 1. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard a bit on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and he cleared it of stones. He planted it with choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and a wine press as well. Then he looked for a good crop of grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. So the similarity here with all the construction of the vineyard is so close, so it just goes on. It talks about the wicked tenants, Israel's leaders. The parable points out the guilt of the Jewish nation, that they turned God's kingdom into a private possession. Mm. Um, they showed contempt for his word. Yet when the vineyard yielded only the vineyard yielded only bad grapes, which was sin and rebellion. So Isaiah 5 continues on. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judea, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have I done for my vineyard than I've done for it? So in the parable, the landowner sent his servants to collect the fruit from the uh, tenants, and the fruit and the, he was talking about the prophets that God had sent to the um, nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. The prophets were sent to remind God's children, or God's chosen, of the uh, commandments, but they rejected them. How were the prophets treated by the God, by God's chosen people? Isaiah was believed to be killed by a wood saw. Amos was banished after preaching at Bethel. Habakkuk was stoned by the Jews. And Jeremiah was beaten and put in stocks by the Jews. Mm -hmm. In uh, Hebrews 11 verse 7 it tells us, They were put to death by stoning, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, they went out about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. So last of all he'd send his son, they will respect my son, he said, and the landowner's son is of course Jesus. In the parable, Jesus predicts his own death. <clears throat> being rejected and taken outside the vineyard to be killed. When the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him away, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Christ was crucified at Golgotha, immediately outside the walls of Jerusalem. So now what will the landowner do to the vineyard tenants? We'll bring those wretches to a wretched end, he replied. 
So I'm going back to um, Isaiah verse 5 again, because it continues on with a parallel story. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I'll take away its hedge and I'll destroy it. I'll break down the walls and I'll, it'll be trampled. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel and the people of Judea and the vines he delighted in. He looked for justice, but he saw bloodshed. And when he looked for righteousness, he heard only cries of distress. Jesus makes it clear to the chief priests of his claim of what was unfolding by quoting Psalm 118, 22. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in his eyes. Therefore, I'll tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce good fruit. The new chosen people will be both Jews and Gentiles, reconciled to God through belief in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In the whole building, he is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by spirit. Mm -hmm. So the vineyard is rented to other tenants, the church of the New Testament, a holy place for all men, both Jews and Gentiles. This is demonstrated when Peter is speaking at Cornelius' house. While Peter was speak, still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who came with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they had heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Jesus concludes a parable. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone whom it falls on will be crushed. Now Jesus is referring to Isaiah 8. 14 to 15, those who do not accept him as cornerstone will be crushed. And Isaiah puts it this way, and he will be a sanctuary, a stone of offence, a rock of stumbling to both houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many shall stumble on it, they shall fall and be broken, and they shall be snared and taken away. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. And they looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people heard that he was a prophet. So, I've said all that to say this. How does this apply to us today? That's the big question. What am I going to follow on to? So the vineyard was God's chosen people, and we are all his new tenants. The Israelite nation was portrayed as a vine by the Old Testament prophets, but in the New Testament, Christ designates himself as the true vine. In John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and the Father is my gardener. The vine is a source of all the branches, and uh, Mary actually said that in her worship this morning, which was quite appropriate, I thought. The vine is the source of life to all the branches. It provides water and nutrients by which the grapes produce, are produced. Without the vine, no fruit could result. The branches are utterly dependent upon the vine. Without Christ, of course, there is no spiritual life or hope of eternal life. Every branch that does bear good fruit will be pruned to produce more. But every branch that does not produce good fruit will be taken away. And with the branches, those that do not remain with Christ will be thrown away, unfit for purpose. So, you have been chosen. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you, so that you might bear good fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Mm -hmm. As the vines of the vineyard, we are required to produce fruit, good fruit, the fruits of the Spirit. These are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. We are told that by these fruits you will recognise them because every good, good tree produces good fruits. We are also to bear the fruit of converts, 
the converts that one personally makes or is instrumental in helping bring to the Lord. <coughs> um, the church here gives in good faith to lots of ministries. Cam's been doing that for a long time. I like that about the church. The consequences of this are unknown, but to potentially far-reaching and everlasting. The new tenants are there to work, to maintain the vineyard, the church. The parable tells us of three main components of the vineyard. Firstly, the wall. You put a wall around it, and the wall offers protection to the vineyard from outside forces. The church needs to look out for each other, supporting each other in prayer, asking the Holy Spirit for protection from attacks that are sure to come. John 15:18. Uh, if the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will look after you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but you have been chosen out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Secondly was the wine press, used for crushing and pressing of the grapes, resulting in the making of new wine. There will also be times of trials that will test you and gather mm. and strengthen your faith. The Bible tells us that proven genuineness of faith is worth more than gold. And thirdly, the watchtower. From the watchtower you can see the whole vineyard, all its surroundings and the big picture, how the vineyard is developing, uh, guiding the labourers, but also the possible approaching dangers so you can send out warnings. In modern times, we get the big picture by the means of God's word, the Holy Bible. It develops understanding that we are saved by grace, mm -hmm. through repentance, not by works of law or by doctrine. Yes. Through the Holy Spirit, we are able to see the warnings and dangers. Um, John 14, 26, The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and you will remain with you uh, and remind you of everything that I have said to you. Uh, so in conclusion, the chief priests and the Pharisees not only understood the parable and all the scriptures leading up to Jesus' coming, but they still missed what was taking place. They were too proud to be corrected because they were fixated on the law. Mm. Their piousness was their stumbling block. I actually hesitated to write that, but it did come to me, so mm. I um, put it in there. It was a, a hesitation, but anyway. Um, their piousness was their stumbling block. And there's lots of other things, but they're proud. They were, they're proud, but they were, what were they proud about anyway? Um, but I got another comment after that. Jesus, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfil it. Yes. So when I was thinking about that statement of their piousness, I also got that um, scripture. Yeah. Um, instead of repenting, they looked for a way to arrest Jesus and ended up under God's, God's condemnation. Mm. We are the new chosen. Like the vine that bears good fruit, it gets pruned from time to time to produce more good fruit. We live in the world and inevitably will be challenged and even compromised from time to time. Through the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we can experience the peace of God. But we need to be repentant of our mistakes, ask for forgiveness when prompted to by the Holy Spirit, who will teach you all things and remind you of everything that Jesus taught. So that's the end of my message, except I'll finish with, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And that's my message. Amen. So Thank you. hope you get something out of that and that gives you a Thank blessing. Praise God. Now one of the things we, we get from Jesus' teaching, maybe even a little bit contrast from the Apostle Paul, but Jesus, when you look at his teaching, it's very concise. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just, if you like, the core, uh, he might have spoken for long, but just the core that is there. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, on the other hand, the Apostle Paul, on the other hand, he went on so long, someone fell out the window and they had to bring back in the life, you know, so it might have been good stuff that someone fell asleep, but certainly he wouldn't have fallen asleep today. I like that, what you got there about the, the, the picture of the vineyard that they put a wall around it to protect it from animals and things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, like we have a, a netting around our garden bed to, 
stop the 